Now let's look at a Micro 850. New project, we'll just call it Micro 850. And we'll select a Micro 850. Now you see two different forms, 24 IO and 48 IO. I always use the QBB. Notice that there is a ninth category down here, a 48 QWB SIM. Now this is the this is the data and process structure that if you instantiate this, it behaves like this LC5048QWB, but it's a simulation. So I'm going to pick a 48QBB, and you can see that you can use most of the earlier versions, but we're going to stick with 12. Add to project, and voila, there it is. We'll expand controller. General, there's not much to look at there. We have a serial port. Notice up here that we have an Ethernet port, a, we'll say RS-232 or DF-1, and then here we have a USB port. So there's three ports on the Micro 850, which is nice. We can configure the serial port. We can look at the USB port as far as enable, disable. We can set the Ethernet IP. Let's go to Embedded I.O. This side up here are the input terminals, and down here are the output terminals. And if we scroll down here, we see that they're broken up into groups, mostly in groups of two, 0, 1, 2, and 3, 4, and 5, and so forth, until you get down to here, 16 through 23. If you set the filter, that's going to do input 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. That's eight inputs with one filter selected. You don't have to use default. And then you can also do some latching, which is a little bit different than some of the other processors. You also have data log and recipe. But what's most unique are that you can have three axes of motion. So if you want to add an axis of motion, you're creating a data structure that's going to be attached to these outputs. So the drive enable output is going to be digital output 6. The pulse output, in other words, the PTO pulse train output is going to go out output 0. The direction output is going to go out of 3. So here's where you can configure drive ready, the setup for each of these axes. Now I'm, I'm going to delete this. But I just wanted to show you that you can have three axes. And that's why I picked the 48 QBB, because it supports three axes as opposed to two. Then you got plug-in modules. Just for grins, we'll do an IQ4, another IQ4, another IQ4, an OB4. So we just filled or populated all of these plug-in slots with discrete digital I.O. So we have a total of 20 I.O. here. We have 12 inputs and 8 outputs, all DC. Expansion modules, we can do the same thing. However, it will accept 16 and 32-bit. So I'm going to go with a 32-bit input, another 32-bit input, and then another 32-bit input, and a 32-bit output. This is all digital I.O. I didn't do a count here, but 128 expansion, and then for the plugins, we had 20. So that's 148 more I.O. points added to the already existing 48. So that gives you an idea of the limit of discrete I.O. And of course, if you do it this way, then you've got nothing left for analog. It's always a good thing to look at the manufacturer's documentation. Now this is a brochure and the brochures don't have a ton of data but it has enough for you to make a logical selection. And you can see here that this one in the second, well the first slot it has a memory backup and then the second slot is a trim pot. So you have six trim pots there. The maintenance or operators can make fine adjustments on things and we have a mixture of modules. These are the eight basic configurations for a Micro 850. The ninth one, which was the simulator, is not here because you can't buy a simulator. The simulator is something you can instantiate from the software Connected Components Workbench with the Micro 800. And the 48 QBB that I use, 28 inputs and 20 outputs. It's all straight up DC. The important thing to notice is that the 48 QBB has three pulse train outputs and the 24 only has two. Notice it also has more high speed counters than the 24. And the reason for this is that the high speed counter inputs and the pulse train output outputs, that those screw terminals have special electronics. 
So for instance, let's take a high-speed counter. A high-speed counter counts the false to true transitions coming to the screw terminal, but it can do it at a rate much faster than the I.O. scan rate of the controller. Remember, the processor scans the inputs, executes the logic, and then transfers the outputs out. But we'll just say that there is a scan time. In other words, so if you had a real high-speed pulse coming in, 15, 20, 70, 75 of them could come in in between scans. You would lose all those counts. So a high-speed counter counts all of those counts, and then when it's time to update the input, it doesn't get on or off. It gets a integer value to say how many pulses it counted between program scans. The pulse train output can put out pulses faster than you could generate with a standard output. And this is done for the sake of motion. The motion instructions, the motion functions with Micro 800 are very similar to control and compact logic. So once you turn the dog loose, it's loose. Once you initiate a move, it's on its way. And it's independent from that point on of what the processor is doing to an extent. If you tell a axis to make a move and it requires 1,200 pulses from a PTO output, it's going to pump out those 1,200 pulses regardless of where the processor's at in a scan. So you see the PTO outputs and the HSC inputs have special built-in electronics that allow this function. One thing I wanted to show you was regarding the high-speed counter inputs and the wire mapping. And you see that there are six high-speed counters. If you look down below the inputs used, you'll see that high-speed counters 0, 2, and 4 use four inputs. High-speed counter 1, 3, and 5 only use two. But notice that between high-speed counter 0 and 1, terminals 2 and 3, inputs 2 and 3 are used. You can't use them for both. So you can't have high-speed counter 0 and high-speed counter 1. However, you could, depending on what mode that you select, have six high-speed counters. They just wouldn't be able to be run in the mode that require all four inputs. So if you're going to require input 0, 1, 2, and 3 for high-speed counter 0, you can't use 2 and 3 for high-speed counter 1. And the same goes for 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. And here's a chart for high-speed counters. So this chart shows the dedicated inputs for the high-speed counters depending on the mode. And down here shows you the modes. Okay, and these uh, these mode numbers are put into the configuration. So you've got zero through nine modes. And here are the descriptions. So look at the manufacturer's documentation before you get too deep into purchasing a microwave 50 if you got a specific application. This is my Micro 850 development station, and by now you recognize the digital field device simulator. Six inputs and six outputs, and you see the wire coming out of the top. These connectors right here, you can't see the connectors, you can just see the bezels, but those are plug-in connectors for the power. So you plug in a 24-volt DC adapter in either one of these, and it will power the whole system, the processor, all the I.O., and everything. Now, this particular development station is constructed to allow a lot of different inputs connect. There are two terminal blocks here for each input. So the blue terminal blocks are each individual inputs. And if you look over on this side, you'll see that I only have six connected out of the 28. So all of these inputs right here aren't connected to anything. But I do have some spare blue blocks here so I can run more inputs over here. And so each of these two terminal blocks, you see they're jumper together with a red jumper. They are an input. I can use the input from, for this terminal right here, that would be input zero. I can use this up here or I can leave that switch off right there and then wire in something to the gray terminal to control that input. And of course you can see the ethernet port, the round pin D-shell, the cover's still on it and then the USB port, and then the switch for mode. 